Good day, everyone. Staff of Honeywell. Um, you're welcome to today's session. This session is going to be on time management and personal effectiveness. I want to appreciate um, the organizers of this awesome training. And um, I'm going to start by introducing myself. My name is Shaka Obiernes. I have 10 years hands-on working experience on leading and training projects in various sectors of the economy. I've been involved in numerous interventions in sales, in IT service management, in occupational safety and health, in process improvement, as well as in project management. I'm a certified Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt professional. I'm a certified DevOps professional. I'm also a certified Scrum Master. I'm a certified project manager. I'm also a certified health and safety manager. I'm a certified IT service management professional. I'm also a certified ISO 27001 information security associate. I'm also a certified cyber security professional and a certified ISO 9001 202010 document controller. Now I possess numerous other certificates in ISO 45001 internal audit, warehouse and stores management, supply chain and logistics management, procurement and contract management, facility and asset management, and first aid. Now, I'm also a certified member of the National Association of First Aid Treatment Providers here in Nigeria. And I'm a certified member of the International Association of Safety Professionals, Document Management Institute, as well as the Project Management Institute, all in the USC. Now, I've undergone both local and international train the trainer courses, and I've facilitated courses for MTN Nigeria, for First Bank, MedPlus, IGI Group, Grand Imperial Group, Lekki Consensus, First, um, PZ, Honeywell, which I'm doing also again, uh, Main One, Tennis, Wemmer Bank, Jais Bank, VDF, Crohn's, Netco, Daystar Christian Center, Masters Energy Group, Calvertin, ICANN, Petrolex, Honey, um, Halogen Security, and a host of indigenous organizations and multinationals. Now, I'm currently a partner and the head of training at Oak Interlink Company. Uh, Oak Interlink is a training and consulting outfit whose primary focus is on human resource development. I have a special executive master's degree in entrepreneurship from the Metropolitan School of Business and Management from the UK and a first degree in geography and regional planning from Ambrusali University, Epoma. You're all welcome. Now let's get down to the business of the day and start by introducing to us what time management entails and what it's about. Now, in order for us to start this, we need to ask ourselves these questions. Have you ever thought about what you want to actually do in the next five years? Have you thought of what you're gonna be doing in the next five years time? Are you clear about what your main objective at work is at this moment? Do you also know what you want to actually have achieved by the end of today? If these questions are not clear, for you, then there's a problem with your ability to be able to manage your time. Now, looking at this picture, what do we think? Now, you see this man having to try as much as possible as he, as he could to be able to look beyond the limitation, the obstacle, the barrier before him to be able to see what is on the other side. And really, it doesn't matter. Now, if you notice, there are a lot of ladders packed under him. And the challenge is the utilization of the resource he has, because it doesn't matter how much resources you have, if you don't really know how to use them, it will never be enough. Now, irrespective of how much ladders this young man has been given to climb, to actually use it to overcome the obstacle, the challenge, the limitation he has, to be able to look at what is actually ahead of him, which is his future, or to be able to see what he is before him, the fact that he, did not, he doesn't know how to manage the resource before him ended up causing his endeavor to be frustrated. And that is the same experience many of us are having today. Many of us are having this experience. Sorry, can you, can you all hear me? Can anyone, everybody hear me? 
You can hear you, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Beautiful. I needed to confirm that. Okay, so if you actually don't know how to use the resources before here, so many of us have numerous resources that have been allotted to us. One of the key resources that we have, which everybody has, is time. Everybody has been assigned the same resource called time. And the time you have is 24 hours. Nobody has more than you, what you have, and nobody has less than what you have. Everybody has the same time. Dangote also has the same 24 hours, just like Michael Tenuga, just like, you know, um, the Gmovia. Some, some also begin to ask themselves, how is it that these people are able to produce more results and get exceptional results beyond what we are getting? bottom line is how are you able to manage your time because every one of us have the same time the same time bill gates has is the same time we also have so the question is how are you able to manage your own time to be able to produce the kind of outstanding results these guys have been able to produce in their own time now everyone has the same 24 hours allotted to them and the question is how are you able to utilize yours even today now very importantly, we must understand that good time management is one of the core differences between the effective people and the ineffective people. How many times have you ever said to yourself, if I only, if there were only more than this number of hours in a day? So if I only had more hours in a day, in spite of all these time saving devices in the home or offices, today. It seems that 24 hours minus, that is, minus eight hours of sleep or so that we have, for some of us who actually sleep eight hours, it just seems to be not enough. Now, one way to actually get more done is through effective time management. Now, time management is actually a crucial success factor. And if you are not good at time management, you will have a you have a very little chance of achieving your strategic plan and personal goals at work and in life. Now, so why don't people actually manage their time? Because every one of us have, let's calculate it. Let's calculate it. Every one of us have 86,400 seconds in a day. Now, despite the benefits of time management, most people do not actually use it. And this can actually be because it's either they don't understand how to go about it, it's either they don't know about it, it's either that they are too lazy to plan, or they enjoy the adrenaline buzz or rush of meeting tight deadlines. You know, it gives some people a sense of importance when, you know, they are always in, trying to race against a set deadline. So that, you know, anxiety, so for some people, they get a kick out of, you know, that anxiety and that, you know, uh, last minute rush for some people. Now, some people even enjoy crisis management, but all of these things are not really appropriate ways to actually live your life or to go about managing your time. Now, the problem with crisis management for some of us who probably do this from time to time, you understand, the problem with crisis management and tight deadlines is that while they can be fun, often they can actually lead to high level of stress and a disrupted private life, tiredness also, and occasionally to, it will lead to failure on projects or even on your job or the business you're involved in. Why? Because you are always going to miss something. You are going to make mistakes because you are, whenever you're in a hurry, whenever you're trying to meet or race against time, there's a tendency that you will make mistakes or that you will miss out on something which will end up leading to rework, which will end up reading, leading to um, things having to be redone again and again because you were un unable to manage your time and you were racing against time in order to meet your tight deadline. Now, so what is time management really in the real sense? Now, the art of time management is actually the art of arranging, organizing, scheduling and budgeting one's time for the purpose of generating more effective work and productivity, which is also known as time management. So time management actually involves exercising conscious control over the amount of time spent on specific activities 
with a focus to actually increase effectiveness, efficiency, or productivity. Now, henceforth, time management actually helps us or helps an individual to be more organized and more productive. So the challenge is that many of us seem not to be effective in the way we go about doing our work. And that is where the problem is. We are not efficient in the way we go about doing our work. It's because of the way we manage our time. And like we rightly established from the beginning, time is a resource and is a very crucial resource that you must learn how to be able to invest as a resource instead of spending it, which has no return or benefit. Now, time management is actually the act or process of exercising conscious control over the amount of time spent on specific activities, especially to actually increase efficiency or productivity. Now, when we look at this, time management may be aided by a range of setting skills, tools, or even techniques used to manage time when accomplishing specific tasks, projects, or goals. So the question is, how are you able to effectively and efficiently manage your time? Because it's possible that you might be efficient and you might not be effective. It's possible that you might be effective and not efficient. But for you to be productive, you must be efficient as well as effective in the way you manage your time and the way you manage yourself. Now, so why are we actually looking at time management? Why are we here? Now, because time management is so important. Time management is an effective tool that everyone and anyone can actually use to pack even more into their 24 hour day and achieve more in the same time than they normally would have achieved before. So it means you can be able to achieve more with less effort. Now, efficiency is about being able to be able to achieve more with less. So if we are able to evaluate this, efficiency is load over effort. So if you are actually required to do a lot of work and you are able to actualize it with less effort, you are efficient. But if you are given a lot of work to do and the work is increased, you understand? It means you are given more work to do and you have to source for more people to assist you and more things to enable you meet up with the more work you've been given, you are not efficient. So it means if you increase in your effort to be able to actually attain or actualize the more load or work you've been given, you are not efficient. So efficiency is about having to achieve more either with the same effort or with less effort. So how are you able to achieve more with less is what we're trying to look at. And it's about how you are able to manage the, this very in, in, important resource called time. Now, for, for everyone, it's important that time is equally um, understood in the way it is being deployed. Also, time management is equally efficient for work and study related activities as well as for personal activities. So time management is needed by anyone who actually tends to perform some task or the other within their working environment. So what's the purpose of time management in a drill sense? Its purpose is to enable us plan the best use of our time. To also be able to cut down on time wasted because many of us waste time doing irrelevant things. Now we also want to devote more time to actually really uh, to real important issues because you don't have all the time in the world you understand so you want to manage the one you have to maximize it to it to it to be effective now the importance of time management and its purpose is also to enable us you know complete more in the time available that we have because you only have eight hours within the working day to actualize all that you're required to actualize within that time now so to complete more in the time available is why we need time to do time management. Now, time management actually leads to helping us eliminate any form of waste of time, to waste waste of resource. Time management leads to enabling us help, uh, helps us to monitor progress, whether we are advancing in what we are doing or we are retrogressing. It also enables us to be able to better allocate our resources, you understand, in the appropriate places, in the appropriate way, at the appropriate time. 
Now, what's the importance of time management? Time management is important as it actually helps us to manage our time more efficiently. And it's very beneficial to every individual as proper time management helps us to be efficient, also helps us to be well-organized and coordinated, helps us even to be self-disciplined, meaning you are able to do what is most important and not what is irrelevant. You're also able to manage your time so that at the end of the day, you have a work-life balance. You are less stressed and you are more relaxed. You can spend more time now with your family because you're able to do the things you're required to do at the right time in the right place. So it enables you to be able to have more time to be able to spend with your family and spend with, with God or with other more important things. Now, so do you know, no matter what type of work you do today, your work will actually be comprised of three very important items. So the only thing that you actually need to do to manage your time well is to actually decide the proportion of the distribution of each of these items in your working environment. So people can actually spend their time in only the, any of these following three ways. They can spend their time sitting down thinking. And you know, thinking is one thing because some people, they spend their time thinking, I wish I could do this. And there are some people who discuss with others. So conversations that this, so you could spend your time converse, converse, having conversations with people. And you can actually spend your time doing actions, doing certain things to make a difference, to be able to improve on the way you deliver your job, which eventually will impact your KPI and eventually will lead to promotion and advancement in your career. So how do we improve personal effectiveness? Now, one of the things is that disorganization is one of the top reasons people actually give for poor time management, particularly when they are not organized. So you want to have a place for everything. You want to put everything in the right place at the right time. Now, you also want to clean, you want to keep a clean desk. And of course, why this is very important, let me give an example of what I mean. If you have a case whereby you are trying to search for something, for some of us, our computers or our systems might look something like this. Now, I can, I can assure you that some of us, our computers really look something like this, whereby so many things are scattered all over the place. And I intentionally left this this way, put this this way so that we can show that. So if you are searching for a particular document, now, because this is disorganized, this is not organized. It means they are not put in appropriate folders. They are not put in appropriate files. They are not put in the appropriate places. They are not labeled. They are not named. So it might take more time to actually search out, search this particular document out. Why? Because of the way they are disorganized. So it means if you are on a tight deadline, you are required to actually carry out a particular assignment and you need information from a particular file, a particular document, a particular um, uh, uh, folder, because they are not well labeled, they are not well positioned in the right place. You could spend even more time trying to search for it. So you have to ensure everything is placed in the right place at the right time. And you want to also ensure that you clean out all what is not necessary. It means if you find out a number of us in our systems or in our computer, there's a lot of junk in there. Things that you probably have not touched in the past, you know, one or two years, and they are still in your system. They are taking up space and they are also adding to you know, the, the time, the obstacles, the barriers of having to search to actually get to the appropriate document that you need that is more crucial and vital for you. So how do you go about managing this? You want to ensure that you are able to place everything in the right place. So a pl there's a place for everything and a place for everything and everything should be placed in its place. Now, one, you want to manage things like clusters. Schedule regular time to actually decluster until it is done. So like the, your, your system, look at your desktop, look at your, the, your document um, section, look at where you have your videos, look at where, even on your desk, even in your files, your cabinets, you need to decluster things that are not necessary, things that are, you've not been using, things that, because every time you want to access something for work, because you need some of these things to actually work, do your work. So 
let's use your, your, your desk, on, your table on top of your desk. Some of us on top of our desk, it's so littered with different things, different books, different folders, different files, different items. So in order to be able to access some of these things, there are things you don't really need that are actually acting as barriers, obstacles to help you easily access what you really need. Same also with your computer and your desktop. For some of us, you know, when you get to your desktop or you get to the document section of your uh, system and you want to access certain files, certain documents, because there are so many things that are not necessary or needed there, they act as barriers or limitation, taking space and preventing you from accessing what is most crucial and what is most important. So what should you do? Decluster. Remove a number of those documents, files that are not relevant. Then some of them are even duplicated. You have documents in your system that are duplicated. They are taking up space. So reduce them, put the ones that are supposed to be in the right place, delete the ones that are doubled or duplicated. And of course, there are some that don't even need to be in your system. And if in case you need them, you want, then you put them in a hard disk or you put them in a flash drive or you put them in the cloud, you understand? Whereby you can up, upload them into um, Dropbox or something that enables you to be able to access them when you need them. So you want to decluster and schedule regular time to decluster until it is done. Then prioritize your projects. Put them in the order of priority. What is most crucial? Pile up everything out first, you understand? Peel out, peel everything out first. Then set three areas or boxes label. Then toss, keep it, and also throw away things that, so there are things you don't need, toss them out. There are things you need, keep them. There are things that are not things that you need immediately, give them away. You understand? Get a friend to help you in doing this and then learn to also, um, learn to also let go in the course of all of this. Okay. Now, the second thing is how to manage paper. Now, some of us are still moving around with paper, in, even in this century where we are more prone to being eco-friendly. So there's a lot of papers littering all over the place, taking up space, creating, you understand, taking up room and creating obstacles and barriers and limitations for us to access and reach out to the things that are most crucial. So what should you do? Go into, become eco-friendly. Most of the documents that you have, convert them, make them soft copy, and then upload them into the cloud so that you don't have them littered all over the place. We have massive cabinets with all manner of paper that are not useful for us right now. Convert them to soft copies, you understand? And then upload them into the cloud so that you can free up all that space. So, so that you don't have your office disorganized with so much paper all over the place, files, cabinets, you understand, documents here and there. And you ask yourself, why are all these things here? They take up space, they make the place look unkept, look clustered. At the end of the day, you are trying to also move around. It's, you are finding it difficult to move around, access certain things, which takes up your time. So you also want to, um, any unorganized paper, is one of the biggest traps to working product productively and using your time wisely. There are actually five choices that enables you to handle paper. First, toss. Throw it into a waste bin, recycle the bin, or even shred. Meaning, you know, you can tear it and there's a, there's a shredding machine that shreds them so that at the end of the day, they don't take up space within your office space. Then you also want to delegate. Give it to someone else to do. If it is not what is of utmost priority for you at the time. You also want to do, which is the focus on the things that in, impact your KPI, act on it. And then there are things that you don't need. You want to also toss them. They, they might be personal. They might be things that certain people don't need to see. You don't want to delegate those ones. There are things that are um, um, very important that needs to be protected. So you don't need anyone to see it, or you can actually do it yourself by tossing them out. Then follow up. Give it a temporary home until you need to act on it. There are documents that of paper that you might have selected that, oh, let me bring this out from here and put it in a temporary home. There are things that you might want to access at immediate. And you understand, there are things that you might not be able, you have, might not need to access until maybe um, three or two months time. So how do you arrange and organize your office in such a way that you are able to save time in searching things? Things that you need to, that you use every day things that you use every day, let them be closer to you. 
things that you don't use every day, that you use probably once in a week, then put them at arm's length. That's you make them a bit further for you. Things that you don't need, maybe you only use once a month, then put them at other designated locations. And things you probably use once a year, there are things you should not, that shouldn't be around you, but in separate offices, which you can access because it's only once a year you need them. So then you file them, give a temporary home, and then things that you file are things that you actually give a temporary home. Okay, so what are the steps for actually managing your time? Now, let's look at some of the steps. Now, the, we, we, we can start looking at the use of our time, uh, managing time, by using what is called an activity log to evaluate uh, the use of our time at this time. So it's just like a medical doctor. For example, if you get to the hospital and you have a complaint, you understand? If, you, if you're having a headache or you're having a stomach pain, the, as you get to the hospital, you will, you will not walk in to go and meet the medical doctor immediately. No, they will first take your vitals, meaning they want to find out what is your current condition. Because if you are coming with a, with a headache or a stomach pain, and you are coming to the hospital to help improve your condition, they need to be able to measure and know what was your current condition before you got to see the medical doctor. So what was your present condition before you came to the hospital and the present condition as you have kept coming to the hospital? So they will take your vitals, they will take your blood pressure, they will take your weight, they will take your height, they will take your temperature to find out what is your current condition. That's the same thing you need to do. You need to use what is called an activity log. A log, an activity log is to help you to be able to look at exactly right now how you are using your time. What is your current condition of how you are using your time? You need to use an activity log, meaning you need to look for an activity logbook and log in everything you are doing in the next three to five days. That means you need to capture how you're actually managing your time right now to be able to know how to improve on. So when there's an improvement, you will know that there's an improvement based on the fact that you knew how you were managing your time at this time, and you now know later the difference. And that's what happens in the hospital. So if they take your current vitals, they know this is your blood pressure. They know this is your temperature right now. They know this is your height. They know this is your weight. They know this is your current condition. So you get to see the medical doctor. You make the complaints. And once you make the complaints, they will give you medication or they will, or you undergo a surgery or treatment in order to improve your current condition. So when there's an improvement, they will measure your improved condition with the current condition you you actually were in before you came into the hospital to be able to know if there was an improvement. So also, if you want to improve the way you manage your time, you first need to be able to capture the way you are managing your time right now via an activity log to be able to know, okay, if I deploy these tools, which we are going to look at, we have what is called time management tools. So if I deploy these tools and I improve my current condition in the way I manage my time, I can be able to know that there's a difference, that something has changed from the way I used to manage my time and the way I now manage my time. So you can measure it and be able to know what you did differently that led to the difference between the way you were ma managing your time before and the way you now manage your time using these tools. You can also know which tool worked and which tool did not work in the way you, were, you now start managing your time so that you adopt and focus on the one that works for you and you ignore the ones that don't work for you. Why? Because there are medications in the hospital that a doctor might prescribe that might not work for some patients, but it might work for some other patients. So they are able to, what they do is probably experiment. They, they check and see what, whether there will be an improvement or the, a difference in the outcome by giving a particular medication. If they don't see any improvement, they will change the medication to another medication to see if there will be a, an improvement. If they still don't see an improvement, they will change to another medication or another type of medical treatment to be able to see if the, if the condition now change, they will now know, oh, this is what we did differently that brought about this improvement. So also, you will now be able to know what you did different, what time management tool you deployed and that you were able to introduced that made the way you manage your time more improved compared to the way it was before, much better than the way it was before, much efficient than the way. It, so you were able to be you manage your time in such a way that you are more efficient and you are more effective and you're able to identify what changed and what led to the change 
so that you can be able to repeat it again and again, and you can also advise people to do the same. So another thing you want to also do is cost your time. In costing your time, it means you must be able to look at, because every second, every hour, every minute, every day has an amount associated to it. Because really what Honeywell pays you for is for the time you spend. So that's why there's what we call man hours. So every day you spend eight man hours. So that is what they pay you for, for the man hours you put in. So if you are actually putting in man hours, time, that means your time is money. Like the uh, popular song says, uh, time not money. So time is money. How are you actually able to cost the time that you utilize? Because if you understand that time is money, it will help you understand that you should not spend time, you should invest time. Because time spent has no return. In short, everyone who spends their time end up not getting any return. Why? Because it's gone. And one thing about it is that once you've, for example, if you've celebrated your 10th uh, birthday, you understand, over your lifetime, you cannot celebrate it again. You can't come back to being 10 or being 20, you understand, or being 30. It's gone and it's gone forever. Why? Because it's been spent. So also, you understand, your time is also spent even at work. But the question is, is it a, the time well spent? Is it a time that you actually invested and you expect the return? Because it is time invested that brings return. So you must be able to cost the time. For example, if you earn a um, hundred thousand, so a hundred thousand a month, what does it come to per hour? So what does Honeywell, if you have to calculate and say, okay, if Honeywell pays me for a month, a hundred thousand. So how much are they paying me for a day? How much are they paying me for an hour? How much are they paying me for every one minute? How much are they paying me for every one second? So it helps you appreciate and understand that if I spend one hour, this is how much I have spent of my time meaning in commensurate with how much I'm being paid. So you must be able to determine what you are worth. That's what I'm trying to say in a nutshell. You must be able to determine what am I worth. So do that calculation. Please make sure you do it today. Calculate, oh, if I'm earning this amount, what am I worth per day? What am I worth per hour? What am I worth per minute? What am I worth per second? So you now know that every second you spend in the cafeteria with a friend, just in a way, you cannot be able to calculate how much you have actually spent that has gone to waste. Do you understand? So know how much your time is worth and therefore which tasks should be avoided, dropped or delegated. Because there are some that if you now realize that, listen, this thing that you require me to, to do is not worth my time because you have not looked at the value and costing of your time. You will now realize this is not worth my time. What will you do? You will delegate it. Delegate it to a, a subordinate that you can be able to say, this one, this work is what this was time, but it's not what my own time. That is the reason for delegate. Every time you are saying, no, no one can do it like me. I will do it myself. You understand? What you are now saying is that this little work is what my time. That's what you are saying. By saying that, no, I will delegate this because nobody will get it like the way I will get it. Nobody will do it like the way I will do it. It means you have reduced yourself to the value of that work and the worth of your time. So it means if that work is not worth your time, you have reduced yourself to the value of that work. And that is degrading. So why should you now delegate? Delegate task that is, you have realized that, listen, someone else can do this, who this work is worth their own time. Then you determine and agree on what is important for success on your job and what constitutes exceptional performance. So once you have been able to determine that, you should do a list, make a list, you understand? Make a list of how you spend your day. What are the things you do, you understand, every day? Make a list, then prioritize them, you understand? And prioritize them. So prioritize it. So that's why every one of us must do what is called a to-do list, you understand? A to-do list. These are the list of the things I intend to do today. And then create an order in which what is most crucial, most important is what should be at the top of that list. Why? Because 
there are things you must do that directly impact on your KPI, and there are things that you do that are not directly impacting on your KPI. They are probably in, impacting on the KPI of, of your uh, team or of the manager. So you want to also look at what directly impacts on my KPI as an individual. What directly, what work will I do in this time that directly impacts on my team's KPI, and what work will I do that directly impacts on my manager's KPI? You understand? So you are able to prioritize based in that order in the list of activities you do in a week and in your li list of activities you do in a day. That's why a to-do list is very important. Then you must schedule the work, meaning you assign time to each of the activities on your to-do list. That, okay, this activity that I've prioritized that is crucial, that will impact on my KPI, my key performance, you understand? That means it will, it, I'll be appraised based on this. Then this work is I should be at the top of my list. It should be most important. That this is what I must make sure I do this today. Even if I don't attempt some of the other ones, this one I must do today. Why? Because it is what will determine my appraisal at the end of the month. So those are things that you should be able to put at the top of your list in prioritizing. Then you schedule the amount of time you will be able to use to carry out those things. You estimate the amount of time you use to be able to carry out those activities. And simply, simply that is just what project management is like. Do you understand? It's not a big, massive, crazy thing that people think. This uh, thing I just explained to you is just simple project management. How you're able to manage your time. Now, then you also concentrate on what you are doing in order to ensure you control it. You understand? Because if you are doing something and you don't have control over it, at the end of the day, it shows that the thing will go out of hand. So identify time management tools that will actually help you to use your time most effectively for success and satisfaction. So how many of us actually know some of these time management tools? We're going to look at some of them because there are tools that will aid you in being able to manage your time. Now, the average person might not be able to naturally manage his time because being self-disciplined takes more than just wishing or willing to do it. You understand? You might be saying, how many of us have had this um, wish list that, oh, I need to get into shape. I need to exercise. And you find that you don't end up exercising. Why? Because you really, because wishing or desiring it is not enough. Trust me. If you are saying, oh, starting from this month, I will need to start dieting. I will need to stop taking mineral. I will need to stop taking, you know, um, um, junk food and start taking fruits. And I will need, all those things are wish lists. But there are things that, tools that put you in check where you become disciplined to actually carry out those things. You understand? And these are the tools we're trying to actually help you understand when it comes to managing your time. So then you want to also implement your time management system. So there's a time management system you need to implement. So the step here, which I've tried, I've, ran down, I've just run through the various steps. Start, starting from the first one, let me expatiate on it. How do you actually spend your day now? Because you must be able to capture it via an activity log. So the memory is actually a very poor guy when it comes to assessing how you spend your time. So it is too easy to forget time spent talking on the phone, handling problems, customers, mails, interruptions, employee issues, mark, making coffee, and so on and so forth. So what would you do to be able to remember how you spent your, or how you spend your time? Use an activity log, you understand? And find out how you're actually using your time. Now, an activity log you can download from the internet, you understand? It's a simple template that you can actually use that has all the necessary information that can help you track how you are using your time right now. This is a very revealing technique, which is to keep an, which to keep, enable to keep an activity log for at least five days. So without modifying your behavior, note down the things you actually do as you do them from the moment you start working, you understand, to the end of the day before you left, you leave home, uh, leave the office. So everything you do, no matter how trivial you you think it 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 is, write it down in your activity log. You understand? Write it down every time you change activities. Whether opening a mail, you understand? Write it out, down on your activity log. Whether you are working or making coffee, write it down on your activity log. And how how much time you spent doing that? You understand? Dealing with people, problems, going to collect paper from a printer how long you spent doing that. Note down the time of the change and the length of the activity, right, the time you spent doing that. Do you know that a very interesting analysis was carried by an individual for, 
for some of these banks. You find they found out that for some of these guys who work in the bank, you understand that when a customer comes and the customer comes with a check to make a withdrawal, now some of them will have to walk to where the printer is. You understand? They walk to where the printer is to do a photocopy of the ID card of the person who brought the check. You understand? And once they do a photocopy of the ID card, they will walk back to the, the counter and be able to, you understand, call, give the person the ID card back, stamp the, um, to check, very verified, and then give the person back. So by the time they did an analysis, they found out that the average teller who works in the bank, when they check how many times he moves from his desk to the printer that is actually on his manager's desk, they found out that it means on an average, he has trek, he treks an average of 18 kilometers every day, moving from, you understand, from the his desk to the printer back to the is, is um, the counter back to the printer back so every time somebody brings a check and they need to verify they need an ID card they will go to the printer and the printer is probably if a, a distance away sometimes some of these banks the printer is even in the next office so they have to check so they imagine the time it takes for them to move from one so the question we began to ask is if this guy must use this printer very regularly can the printer be beside him? Must be, and the funny thing is that the printer will probably be on the manager's desk in the next office or some few kilometers, a few meters away, who probably doesn't use the printer maybe more than once in a day. But these guys that use it very frequently, the printer is not close to them. So that gives you a good question that whatever you need, you use consistently within every hour, keep it around you. Let it be in arm's reach, stapler, cell tape, pencil. Pen, you understand? Staple pins, you understand? Uh, office pins, paper, anything that you need that you know that you must access at least once in one hour must be within harm's reach around you so that you don't have to stand up on your desk to move. At that time you spend going to go and access that thing is productive time that is eating into your man hours, eating into your time. You understand? Whereby it's eating into the time you are allotted that is not sufficient even for you to complete the work for the day. And that's the problem. So you must be able to track how you're actually using your time now because that particular bank, it was as a result of analyzing how they were using their time, they were able to capture that error and found out that, listen, why are these people spending so much time moving from point to point trying to print, uh, so trying to do photocopy of an ID card? They are spending so much time doing it. And the funny thing is that when they found out that they were doing this and they were moving up and down, up and down, up, so they found out that after a number of hours, they get exhausted. And they actually ask them, why are you exhausted? Even it's just one, it's just 12 noon and you're already tired and exhausted. And they're like, we don't, well, you're in one spot. This is where you are. Why are you exhausted? But eventually they're able to capture by analyzing that. Oh, why they are exhausted is because of the number of times they have had to stand up from their table to move to go and print, to come back, move to the printer, come back, move to the printer, come back. So they found out that that was what was stressing them. So by the time it was 12 noon or 1, they were already tired and fatigued. And then they started making mistakes. The error rate now increased. And that was a major problem. So you want to analyze your log. Once you, are log, you, 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 you have logged your time for several days, Analyze this law. Look at it. You understand? It will give you a good understanding of how you're actually spending your time now. You may also be alarmed to see the length of time you spend opening mails, talking to people, dealing, you understand, with things that any form of interruption, you understand, or doing low value jobs. Because this will also help us to be able to do something. In order for us to be able to capture this, I want you to be able to do a, a chat. And in, in, um, one minute, I want you to be able to draw a chart and write on top of it um, activities I have control over in the office and activities I don't have control over in the office. I want you to write a few things that you have control over and a few things you don't have control over. I want to quickly do that now. Everybody tear a sheet of paper and quickly do that. I want you to draw a line and then on the left-hand side, write all the activities that you have, a control, that you have control over. And on the right hand side, I want you to write all the activities that you don't have control over that happens to you in the office. For example, you don't have control over the weather. 
You don't have control over, you know, a call coming into your phone. You, you, don't have a, you don't have control over a colleague coming to interrupt your work to ask for something. Those are things you don't have control over. List them out. What about the ones you have control over? List them out on the left-hand side. So I'm giving you one minute to quickly do that. Tear a sheet of paper and quickly do that because it will help us know what is important and not urgent. What is urgent and not important? What is urgent and important? And what is not important and not even urgent? It helps you to be able to categorize where what is urgent and important should be what is urgent and not important should be, what is important and not urgent should be, and what is not even important and not urgent, where it should be. You understand? So it will help us categorize that because there are things you are doing that, number one, they are not important, but they are urgent. There are things you are doing that are important, but they are not urgent. There are things you are doing that are not important, they are not urgent, but you are doing them. What should be the things you should be doing? What is important and what is urgent? Those are the things that you should prioritize and place at the top of your list. So this... This will help you be able to actually identify what is urgent and important by doing a list of what you have control over and what you don't have control over. I want you to quickly do it because we are working towards improving the way you manage your time. You staffs of Honeywell, we must be able to ensure that we are able to manage the way we go about our work, ensuring that our time is used in a productive way. Because if our staffs of Honeywell, we cannot be able to be productive and improve in the way we deliver our job, it means we are doing the same thing the same way we have been doing it and expect a different result. Do you know what that is? That is insanity. Insanity is doing the same thing the same way and we're expecting a different result. If that is the case for you, then that means you are functioning in insanity. But I want to believe that none of us here are functioning that way. And we must have sat down and said, this is what we want to achieve. We have projected goals. We have set an objective. And we must work towards actualizing it. And that's why we're looking at this program to ensure that we are able to manage our time and improve on the way we actually manage our time right now at work. Because what enables us to be productive is the man hours we put into the way we work. And it means every individual has eight man hours. So if you have two people within that office, you have 16 man hours. You understand? Imagine if you have 10 people within that office. Imagine if you have 200 people within that establishment. You can imagine the number of man hours you have to be able to bring about productivity. So how much is your time worth? It's important you analyze this. The first part of our focus, because we have talked about this, the first part of our focus is on results, you understand? The first part of our focus on results is to work out how much your time costs right now. How much your time costs right now. Work out how much your costs, you understand? Your, your, how much you cost per day, hmm? per hour, per second? I talked about that earlier. So to this figure, add a guess estimate of the amount of profit you should generate by your activity. So let's assume that Honeywell is paying you per hour because that's what happens in the developed country. You understand? They pay per hour. Let's assume they're paying you per hour. I'm sure if we were working with the mindset that we're being paid per hour and somebody you know, a, a relative um, opted to come and visit you in the office. You probably might <laughs> tell the person, ah, well, sorry, I don't think I'll be able to see you because this person has come to steal, you understand, money from you. Because if you are being paid, for example, 10,000 per hour, it means for that one hour you spend with that relative, that, that relative has taken 10,000 away from you. Imagine if you were paid me. 10,000 for one hour. So if we are, that, that particular person comes, that friend who was just passing by and felt, let me just check up on you. Let me just drop by and check how you are doing. That person could have done that over the weekend. Why would that person check up on you during the working week on the working day when you're at work? You understand? Unless it's urgent. If it is not urgent, that person has no business checking up on you doing productive hours. Why? Because that hour that the person is wanting to take from you, you understand, is costing you. And that's why you need to evaluate and know what your worth is. So that you can, know, if you know what your worth is, you know how to be able to improve on your worth. So it means if you get promotion and your salary increases, it means your worth has increases, increased. If you understand, your, your revenue increases, that means you know that I'm using, I think I'm actually using my time much better, you understand, in a more better way. So from these figures, calculate an hourly rate, and this should also give a reasonable estimate of how much 
your time is worth even now. And this may even be very surprising to you once you do this calculation, trust me. How should you now see your time? An important part of this of focus on result is how do you look at your time? So what should you, um, what should you like to spend your time on really? Do you understand? This is what you probably might come to understand if you're able to evaluate and know what your work is. Per hour, per second, per minute. But that's why even if you, let's look at it. If you make a call, they bill you per second. If the service providers have understanding of the value of time, how would you have an understanding of the value of time? Because if you talk, talk is money. You can't talk for free. So it means every time you speak over the phone and speak to someone at the other end, you have spent money for every second, for every one minute, for every one hour. So if you spent one hour just gisting with somebody, MTN doesn't know or care to know whether what you have said is important, they will bill you for that one hour. It's the same thing. Honeywell should not care to know what you have discussed with anybody for that one hour. Bottom line is that that one hour in cost, have you invested it in office work to bring about a productive outcome that will impact on your income or impact on your KPI or impact on your performance at the day, at the end of the month when they review it? If it's not, then it means you should keep quiet and not spend your time talking or saying unnecessary things to people. In short, you should prevent certain people from coming into your office. And that's why some people create what is called uh, offices with, with barriers that have glass. You understand? I don't know whether you've experienced, I've seen some people who will leave their desk and come and meet me on my desk in my office. And the idea is that they just want to gist, they want to, and they want to, and they, some of them talk a lot. And you're like, when will this guy leave? Go? When will this guy go? You understand? This guy, I'm tired of, you know, and there are people like that. They are, called, they are just coming, they are time stealers. They come to steal your time. And remember, your time is money. You understand? So you don't want to spend that amount of time doing things that are not important, that don't impact on, on your performance and don't bring value to you. You have better things to use your time for. You understand? Because this time, once it's gone, it's gone. This person is even doing you much, much harm and disjust, dis, uh, uh, unjust, unjust. That meaning the person is deceiving you and stealing your time away. That person is more wicked to you than even the person that is stealing your property. Anyone that is stealing your time is doing you more harm than anyone that's stealing your property. You know why? Because someone steals your car, you can buy another car. Do you understand? But if someone steals your time, trust me, you can never get that time back. You can never replace, even that person can never replace it. That person who has stolen your time can never replace it. But if someone steals your car, you can replace it. You understand? Or the person can choose to replace it tomorrow. But once your time is gone, it's gone. So it is important to know what your talents and weaknesses are. Because another very important thing about time is that if you notice, you won't take note of time. You understand? Time, 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 you know, seems to, um, you know, fade away when you are doing what you love. You understand? But when you are doing something you don't love, something you don't like, something that you, you understand you're not passionate about, something that you are stressed about, you find out that you'll be more, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be like the time is dragging. For example, how many of us have experienced it? Maybe you're watching a movie. You can spend almost three hours watching a movie, but if you are going to meet someone, a client, and they, they made you sit in the reception, you understand? for an hour, I'm telling you to be like one year, sitting and waiting, doing nothing. Why? Because you it's not what you like. You don't, you don't naturally like waiting unnecessarily. You understand? So it's the same thing. If you are doing things that you don't like, you find out that the time will be dragging. You, be, you understand? It will look like you know, you've spent 10 years or you spent two years, you understand? But if you do what you love, you find out that time goes very easily. And you're not even conscious of your time because the time goes so fast and you find out, ah, I spent two hours, yeah? Because it's what you love. Do you understand? It's what you love doing. So very important, what do you love doing? You must acknowledge it because that's where you invest your time. And it will become stressful to you or burdensome to you doing it because you are not going to be looking or conscious of time. You understand? It's like when, when some of us fast, 
You understand? How many of us, I'm sure some of us have experienced it. When you fast, you are told to fast. Some of us are even fasting now. When you fast and, you know, they are telling you you should break by six o'clock. I'm sure once it's quarter to six, you'll be checking the time. Ah, why? Because you are doing something you, are, you don't love. You do, your body doesn't like it. You don't enjoy it, fasting. But when you are watching a movie, you are not even conscious of time. You understand? Why? Because you are enjoying it. So the question is, you must be doing what you enjoy at work. Now, what do you enjoy doing at work? That's where you should focus yourself around. Focus on the area of your strength. The area of your strength is what you have flair, passion, and it comes natural for you. Do you understand? And your team members are meant to complement you in the areas of your weakness. Because when you are brought into a team, what they've done is that they have said, anybody who is going to work with you on your team, your own area of weakness is their own area of strength. So they will complement you in that area. So at the end of the day, you people are not exposed. It means nobody is able to identify the weaknesses of anybody. Why? Because each person is complementing each person. So it means you are focusing on your area of strength and the area of weakness where you are exposed, where you could have threat and you could be affected is being complemented by another team member. Who, who your own area of weakness is their own area of strength. That's the reason for working as a team, not working in isolation, working as an individual, work as a team so that you can be able to focus around your area of strength and your performance will increase and you will deliver better on your job. You understand? So it's important you use a SWOT analysis to actualize this. Strength, weakness, so that you can, once you know your area of strength, you're able to maximize your opportunities and you know your area of weakness, those areas of weakness are the areas where you are threatened, where you can be exposed. You have your team members or certain things complement you in those areas. So you do a SWOT analysis on yourself. Step four, identify your time management tools. Because sincerely, you can't do this by yourself. There are certain things that will aid you to be able to actually manage your time. There are certain tools that will aid you to be able to manage your time. Another a typical example is this tool we are using. Do you know this is a tool that we're actually using to be able to carry out this training? Do you understand? This is a tool. This tool is aiding us to be able to communicate right now. It's the same thing. There are, for you to manage your time effectively, there's a tool that can aid you. And there are numerous tools, you understand? Once you have collected your time log from when you captured your activity log for a period of at least five days, analyze it, identify what is stopping you from achieving the results that you want, then carefully go through the time management tools list. We're going to look at it. And you know, the time management tools list is like when you have a toolbox. So if you have a mechanic, you understand, come to your house to fix your car, the mechanic must come with tools. The mechanic cannot use his hand to open the car and start resolving what the problem is in order to improve the condition of the car. No, the mechanic can't use his hands. He needs tools. He will come with a screwdriver. He will come with a plier. He will come with a tester. He will come with a, a screwdriver. You understand? He will come with a spanner. These are tools that will aid him to be able to resolve the problem that this car is having to be able to improve its current condition. That's the same thing you need to do. So what are these tools? Let's look at some of these tools. First, one of such a tool is dropping tasks that do not benefit you. Drop them. You understand? If they don't benefit you, drop them. And you're like, oh, but you are required to do them. Delegate them. You understand? They don't benefit. Drop them. Number two, avoid procrastinating. Attack whatever you're meant to do immediately. Don't say shift it to later. Every time you procrastinate, you, pro, you prolong the doomsday, the doomsday. Every time you procrastinate, it means you make it more complex to attend to it later. You understand? It means if you procrastinate, something else will be affected in the future. Because whatever you have, whenever, whatever you have procrastinated will impact on something else because it requires your attention now. You understand? So if you procrastinate, you have shifted it and it will have, it's like a pregnant woman that is due for labor. And the pregnant woman is saying, ah, I will give birth now. You understand? I will hold, the holding back the pregnancy has implication. Why? Because she's trying to procrastinate. There are things you should not procrastinate. Why? Because they have implications. Then, like I said, delegate work to other people. Don't be the alpha and the omega, the all in all. You are not designed to do everything. There are things that you are not designed to do. Delegate them. They are not worth your time. You don't have strength in those areas. Delegate it to someone who that is that, is that person's area of strength. Do you understand? Don't try to do everything by yourself. 
Then, when we talk about delegating, it's an important concept when you learn about it, you understand? Very lovely concept. Then, create extra hours. How do you create extra hours? Get up early. You understand? Try and wake up earlier than normal. You understand? If you get up at least one hour earlier for a year, do you know what that means? You have effectively created around 10 additional working weeks by just getting up one hour earlier than you normally wake up. You understand? For some of us, we sleep so we sleep, we forget ourselves and sleep into you know the, the, the day, and the day is now bright, and you are now waking up. You understand? So you want to wonder that ah, what happens if I wake up earlier? You understand? That means I'm able to take my time to prepare for work and I'm able to beat traffic and get to work early. If you get to work early, you are able to now be relaxed. You are able to even attack some of the, the work you want to attack on time so that you can finish all that you need to finish on time and you can leave the office when you're supposed to leave the office. Now, for some of us, some of the reasons why we will stay back is because we have work, work, work piled up. We have what is called an inventory of work because you have procrastinated, you had you understand, refuse to delegate because and those things take your time because you have failed to manage your time. So try to get up early, you understand, so that you can be, and I realize that if I leave much earlier, I'll be able to beat the, for, for if I wake up late and I leave home late, I, I will spend probably an hour, of, an average of three hours in traffic, you understand, trying to get to work. I'll be stressed, tired. So when I'm getting to work, I'm exhausted, I'm tired, I'm stressed. You understand? And by the time I want to start work, you understand, I'm starting work in a stressed condition. But if I wake up earlier, I leave the house earlier, I'm able to spend less time in traffic, I'm able to get to work earlier, I'm more relaxed, you understand? I'm not under tension, I'm not stressed. I'm able to now take my time to do my work and I will not make mistakes. I'll be more productive that way. And at the end of the day, my performance will be much better for the day. Then also avoid distractions. Things like visitors that come and waste a lot of your time. Avoid distractions, you understand? There are people who actually are not supposed to come and check on you during working hours, you understand? Avoid such distractions. That's why I said there are offices that they create what is called gatekeepers, meaning there are people who will need to fill certain visitors for before they come and see you. Why? It is a gatekeeping system so that they will need to state their objective, why they are coming to see you, before you will actually analyze if this person is worth your time and what this person is coming for, if it's worth your time, before you invite the person, okay, come over, let me see you. So you must be able to avoid all those kinds of distractions. Other people may even have a disciplined approach to work as well. You may even find that you are wasting time dealing with people who stop to chat and gossip in, in your cubicle, you understand? Or have time needed to, in, for intense concentration, disrupting, disrupted by employees needing to actually help on small matters as or are being um, pestered by uh, salesmen or by different things. So there are people that just come and chit chat on trivial matters. Oh, did you hear that the video is getting married? I'm doing working hours, for God's sake, you understand? Ah, did you hear that uh, uh, Bobby Risky has HIV? Those things are distractions, you understand? Now, if you need gossip, those are things you can check on your way home. You understand? You can check the gossips on your way home, but not during working hours. Not someone coming to take out of your, your productive time, your precious time. And those things are coming to distract you from the main work that you are meant to do, which will impact on your KPI and impact on your performance that will be reviewed at the end of every month. So you don't want to have that. Avoid even phone calls, unnecessary phone calls. Phone calls can be enormously distracting. So what should you do? Batch your phone calls. How do you batch your phone calls? Batch your phone calls, meaning that what is important, you understand? The ones that are important. So you want to be able to do it in such a way that you have um, your personal line and you have your office line, you understand, separate. Now, if you have your personal line separate, it means any call that's coming into, into that line, you will know that it's not office related. So you want to batch it and say, okay, what is urgent? My wife calls or my husband calls. You understand? My children's school calls. Those things are urgent. But they are not important to your work, but they might be urgent. So you don't know why they are calling. You understand? So if they are calling, that means it probably might be urgent. But if they call and they, you don't pick, 
they will send the text, meaning it is not urgent. But if they keep calling, that means it's urgent. Do you understand? So you put some of those um, kind of um, uh, phone calls on voicemail. So some of them will call in, they will drop a message. Some of them will call, there'll be an automation whereby you, there will be a message going to the person that, oh, I'm in a meeting. Particularly if it's an elderly person, it's an uncle, an aunt, so that the person doesn't feel offended. I called you and you didn't pick my call. So there's an auto responder. Oh, I'm in a meeting. You understand? I will please call me back later. Things like that. So it's important you're able to manage your phone calls in an appropriate way. We'll talk about it much later. Then concentrate on results, not on being busy. You understand? Because some of us might be very busy in the office, but we are not productive. Being busy is not productivity. There are many people who are busy, but they are not productive. So how do you become productive? Look at what will ensure that you are efficient on your job, which will require you to do less for more results. So it means you are able to deploy little effort to do more. Do you understand? And this is neatly summed up into what is called the Pareto principle, which is the 80-20 rule. Because if you have, you want to get 80% of your result, you understand? It means you will need to invest 20% of your time getting the 80% outcome. Do you understand? 20% of your time getting 80% of your outcome. Now, break down projects into also workable chunks and then set your priorities and develop a plan and organize it. We're going to talk about this developing a plan and getting organized. We're going to talk about it more closely. Then you want to set deadlines, set prime time for extracting tasks. Like I said, use gatekeepers. That's why we have a security post. That's why we have security posts, not just at the gate into Honeywell, but even into different departments. You understand? Into different units, even into different buildings. You should have gatekeepers. So it means people should not just, shouldn't just walk in to want to take out of staff members' time or unit's time or a department's time. If it is not expedient, if it's not important, if it's not urgent, they shouldn't be able to beg you to take your time. Do you understand? So it means, how does that apply to our work? How does this affect our performance? How does this impact on our KPIs? Those are the checks that this gatekeeping does to be able to ensure that whoever is coming to see you must have a purpose and must be, have a justifiable purpose for coming to speak, to see you, to, to want to request for your time. Do you understand? And the person must state it in a in a log that actually states that, oh, I need to see this person for this purpose. And then once you're able to evaluate and you're able to confirm what purpose this person wants to see you for, and you feel it's worth your time, you will accept the, you understand, the, the visit. But if not, I'm sorry, I'm busy. I'm in a meeting. I will attend to you later. Simple. Why? Because they, are, they, they could be coming to steal your time. You should be like a watchman, watch it so that nothing just comes and steals your time unnecessarily because you don't have so much of it, trust me. And you don't have so much of it to, to, to waste all over, all over the place. So hold few minutes priority meetings as well. Use what is called waiting time effectively. So how do you use waiting time effectively? So imagine if you go to the reception to see a client, instead of just sitting down idling away, you pick up a book about time management or personal effectiveness, you understand? Uh, so you want to be able to look at how, can, how best can I better manage my time? You want, maybe you are developing your career and there are certain, you understand, courses you are taking. You can use that time, you understand, to be able to study and also learn while you are waiting in the reception, you understand? There are things you can even use to pass time so that you are not just spending the time, you are investing it. So even if you get to the restroom, you are sitting down in the toilet, instead of just looking in the ceiling, looking at the ceiling, you can go with a book. You understand? You can go with your phone to actually watch a YouTube video on how better to do the work you are doing. You understand? Please invest your time. Even if you are in a bus, instead of just looking outside the window and looking at the, the trees and looking at people passing, look, use that waiting time inside the bus, at the bus stop, inside the bus, to invest it, to do something that will impact on your performance, impact on your career, impact on, you understand, even your 
the time you spend with your family, you can learn about how better to balance your life. You understand? And how to be able to be stress-free, how to invest your money. There are things you can learn while you are waiting. So ensure you invest your time in something that impacts on your life. Instead of sitting down idling away in uh, waiting places, you understand, like that I've mentioned, doing nothing. Then don't be a perfectionist because perfection is waste time doing things. You can do things and it will and perfect it as you go on. Do you understand? Also, learn to say no. There are people who might even be superior to you who will just come to your desk who want to just politely tell them no. Now, you might say, oh, this is my boss. Uh, if he's not coming to discuss something with you that is going to affect your work, you understand? And it's just coming to just, ah, um, you know, I just bought this wedding gown. How does that impact on my work? There are things you should be able to say no to. Do you understand? If they are not going to impact on the work, there has no value or contribution to how you are going to do your work and how it will impact on your performance, politely say no. It could be colleagues. It could be superiors. It could be subordinates. It could be this. There are times you must learn to say no. You understand? Sorry, I can't see you at this moment. Sorry, I can't attend to you at this time. Sorry, what you are requesting for, I cannot make it available. Sorry, I, because it will take your time. You understand? Particularly, somebody is delegating something to you. Who is not your line head? Who is not your, you understand, your uh, supervisor? And then you ask yourself that, so why will I do something for not? So if it's not in line with your work and you are, the person are not taking permission from your line head or your supervisor or your, or your coordinator, and it's trying to bypass all of this to get to you, to get, your, get you out of what will impact on your work, then you must learn to be, say no. Now, is this being, uh, being, uh, acting as a subordinate, uh, acting uh, in such a way that you are disobedient? No. No, that is not the case. I said politely. And if you want to actually get the person to do the right thing, sorry, please. Have you spoken with my line head before you came to me? Have you spoken with my coordinator before you came to me? Have you spoken with the manager, my manager before? So that the person will pass through the proper protocol before the person gets to you to want to take you out of your busy schedule, out of your assignment, out of what impacts on your performance, on your KPI, and take you into something that does not add or does not add value or impact on your performance at all. So be careful. Then prevent what is called paper piles. That's inventory of paper. That means it, those things that are piling up, even mails that you've not attended to, you have not read, stop getting them piled up. Some of us, when we open our email addresses, we have piled, you understand, mails that have not been read, unread messages. They are all piling up in our inboxes. Why? Because we are procrastinating. We'll attend to it later. We'll attend, avoid that. You understand? Avoid procrastinating, having your uh, uh, messages pile up, you understand, even on your um, desk, documents that you need to treat, you need to sign, you need to analyze, you need to vet, you need to stop allowing them pile up. Because as you align them pile up, it's going to make the work more stressful for you when you want to attend to them. It's going to make the work more stressful for you. Then try as much as possible to be able to discriminate. You might say, oh, discriminate. Yeah, discriminate in the sense that you are able to separate what does not, what is valuable to you and what is not valuable. Meaning be dis discriminate and separate. Dis discriminate means separate what is important and what is not important. What adds value and what doesn't add value. Discriminate. Look, so these are some of the time management tools that you can use. One of such is a planner. You understand? A, the, another one is a calendar. Another one is a to-do list. Another one we've, all, we've talked about extensively is an activity log. And another one is a diary. You understand? How many of us have diaries? You understand? How many of us have diaries? How many of us have uh, organizers? How many of us have, you know, cal calendars on our table? You understand? How many of us have, we, we, we prepare a to-do list every morning when we actually get to the office on the things we want to do for that day? How many of us do that? Many of us probably don't. But some of us that do, I must commend you. And I must say, keep, keep at it. You understand? And good job. But for some of us that don't have, who don't use, I don't use these tools. Please try to start using them. It will help you to be able to manage your time more effectively. Let's look at each of these tools one by one. Let's start with the planner. It's a very useful tool for time management. You understand a planner. Some of these planners could be in our phones. You understand 
like an organizer. Some of us could be actually in our phones. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be a physical, but there are some that are actually a book, you understand, uh, that you need to buy. But for some of us that are not techy, you understand, you might probably want to get the book, you understand, of an organizer or a planner. But if you are someone who you, you know how to navigate your way on the phone, get it, your, it has, it is on your phone, use it. Don't just use the phone for just making calls. The phone has a lot of functionalities that could be a reminder for you if you have a meeting, a reminder of tasks you are meant to do. You understand? They, are, they organize your time for the day and how you actually carry out those activities and the time you spend carrying out those activities. You understand? It's a useful tool for time management. It's a planner. You can actually use planners to effectively plan a day, a week, or as well as a month in advance. You can always keep in mind that you make sure to note down important meetings, deadlines, project milestones, and so on and so forth in the planner that you use. Whenever you actually commit any due date or social event, always enter the same into your daily planner, you understand, at once. Now, develop a habit of actually reviewing your planner daily for the current week and even the upcoming week. When you actually review your planner, you can see it at a glance and all the tasks, that, need to perf that you need to perform, as well as the social events that you need to attend, you can see that at a glance by opening your planner, you understand? Then also review your planner would help to reveal or uh, uh, relieve stress by knowing that you have things to track and have a well laid plan for the week. Now, another very important, you know, uh, time I meant to is the calendar, you understand? Now, how many of us really, let's be sincere, how many of us have a calendar on our tables? You understand? And you know, if you have a diary also, it could serve as a calendar for you. Because some of us, our diaries could also form as a calendar. But it's important you have one so that you have activities scheduled. You understand? You know when. So even if you are scheduling an appointment, you cross check if it's not clashing with any other thing. You understand? Because you, don't, you can't be having eight or, or, or so events or appointments within the same time. It shows you are, you are not organized. And then it means you are going to disappoint some people. And it shows that you are not able to manage your time well. So what should you use? A diary or a calendar. A calendar can also help you identify when you have a particular appointment or a particular task to carry out, how long it should take, and so on and so forth. So another useful time management tool is a um, calendar. It's an like, a, like an electronic calendar. You understand? You can actually use a calendar to record meetings, appointments, and due dates for a monthly view, you understand, as well as an, a yearly view. Then, you, for a person who actually handles multiple responsibilities and loads of tasks at the same time, an annual calendar should be used. You understand? And you can actually organize the annual calendar by areas of responsibility, and then even jotting down the tasks and events on such an annual calendar. Now, you should also list the major responsibilities, um, the area-wise by month, you understand, month by month, and you can also use the annual calendar to view at a glance the tasks that must be completed in a given month of the year. Always develop a habit of entering the date of the meeting in your calendar as soon as you commit to a meeting. Also make sure to include follow-up, that's follow-up dates in your calendar. Now, for those of us that don't have a calendar, at least on our desk, please get one. You understand? It will help you sincerely. Now also, like I said, make sure you do a to-do list every day. Um, like for our own organization, our, our team, Every team member is required to do a to-do list. So as a, a coordinator, I have them submit their to-do list to me every day. So I can look at what they are doing. I can track what they are. I, I won't assume that they know what they are doing or that they should be able to know what they are meant to do. No, I will not assume that. I want to see what they are doing. And if it's sufficient enough for the day, that means I'm able to analyze from their to-do list that, they have enough work to do to keep them busy. You understand? Keep them engaged. And they, they are not postponing or procrastinating tasks. You understand? 
They are not procrastinating tasks that they are meant to do today, tomorrow. So a to-do list is very important. To-do list prove yourself uh, prove to be greatly useful for someone who has a list of multiple tasks that need to be completed. Now, to-do list help to actually keep track of the tasks that need to be completed, and they also help in avoiding forgetting to do a few of them when caught in the midst of all the activities. Now, you can actually use a to-do list to list down all the tasks that you need to complete and in order of the priority in which they actually have to be completed. So it means the to-do list, like I said earlier, you enables you to list out all the tasks and then it, you can now arrange them in the order of preference, meaning in the order of priorities. And that's what the to-do list helps you do so that you can now focus on the ones that are important and urgent first before you get to the ones that are urgent but not important. Then before you get to the ones that are important but not urgent, then finally before you, you, you know, you're not, you're not looking at, okay, what is not urgent and what is not important. So in that order. So it's important you look at this. And um, of course, a to-do list also um, enables you to follow, you can follow the, the following steps. The following are the steps that you actually need to follow to prepare a to-do list. Identify and write down all the tasks you need to complete in the form of a list. That's number one. Two, break complex and large tasks into small, simpler component tasks. You understand? Three, after you have now finished listing all the tasks, allocate priorities to each of these tasks. Then four, you can also prioritize by numbering the tasks from top to bottom as per their priority. And then finally, you now also want to carry out the jobs at the top of the list first. That's the ones you attempt first. And these are the most important and most beneficial tasks that you want to complete. Do you understand? So like the activity logs we had talked about earlier, I'm not going to dwell so much on this because we talked about it earlier. But I talked about the diary and the importance of it. One of the most common and effective tools of time management is a diary. Now, you can actually use a diary as a journal to list down your daily experiences action plans and your activities to save time as well as resources. Hence, you can also actually use a diary to reflect back on your day and help you to actually save time and plan for the future. So you're able to use a diary to look, how did you spend your day? So I shouldn't have spent my day this way. This, this, this I shouldn't have done. So tomorrow I should know better not to do this, 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 you understand? It helps you to reflect back and look at what you did wrongly and what you did right, and be able to improve on that even in the, uh, the following days to come. Now, this brings us to the components of time management. There are actually uh, six components of time management. You have planning. We've talked about that. There's organizing. There's delegation. There's managing of interruptions. There's scheduling, and there's prioritizing. Let's start with the first one, planning. For effective planning, it is important that you know the difference between what is urgent and what is important. Now, urgent tasks assign importance as they demand immediate attention from you. However, you should always bear in mind that important tasks may become urgent if they are left unattended to or undone. Now, such important tasks, when they are actually left undone, may usually have a longer time effect if they are not attended to immediately. And I talked about this earlier. So I'd explain that if you want to be able to manage your time properly and organize yourself, you want to use this time management matrix, you understand? And the time management matrix is such that it helps you classify into four quadrants what is regarded to be urgent, what is not urgent, what serves as distraction, and what serves as time wasters. So there's what we define as being urgent, you understand? And what we define as um, being important. So let's look at the quadrant on the top left, the topmost top left. What is urgent and important? These are necessities, you understand, that could bring crisis, medical emergencies, deadline-driven projects, things that you are meant to do that have a time frame allotted to it, a deadline. You cannot but do them because you can't procrastinate, you can't shift them to another time because they are time-bound. They are urgent, they are important. But there are some that are urgent, but they are not important. They are distractions, interruptions, you understand? 
um, a, a, a colleague coming to actually interrupt you while you are working to create a gist. Yeah, it might act as though it's important. I'm sorry, urgent, but it's not important. You understand? Phone calls that are coming in, uh, many meetings. If you're having numerous meetings, that you understand. And meetings should have an agenda because if you sit in sit in, in meetings all through the day, it means you will not have work done. You will not have anything done. So whatever meeting you are walking into, you must be pre-informed about its agenda and the time frame the meeting will take. So if someone is inviting you or they are inviting you for a meeting, for you to be part of a meeting, and they cannot define what the agenda is and how long it will take, most likely that meeting will steal your time. Though that meeting will not be regarded as important, you understand, or urgent as the case may be. Then, yeah, um, things that are important, but they are not urgent. They are like personal fulfillment, like issues like your health, maybe exercising in the morning, you know, eating the right diet, you know, building a relationship with your wife or your husband or your um, fiance or your girlfriend, as the case may be, building those relationships, you understand? Those things are not urgent, but they're important, you understand? Because if you are not having a healthy relationship at home, it will impact on your psyche, your psychology in the office. And that's where the issues of emotional intelligence comes in, you understand? Because you see some people who at the home front, there's a lot of issues. They're having issues with their wife or husband and they transfer that aggression from the home to their work and re relate to their colleagues that way, with that annoyance, with that bitterness, with that. So there must be a balance, you understand? There must be a balance. Issues that have to do with personal growth as well, you understand? They are not urgent, but they're important. But the ones that are terrible, that are the ones you should avoid, they are, not important and they are not urgent. They are the ones that are the, the corporates, you understand? The, the time stealers, you understand? They are the time wasters. They are trivial busy work, busy body, you understand? Junk mails that are jumping into your mails. I just, oh, imagine some people opening junk mails in the office, you understand? Things that are maybe uh, Konga or Jumia throws an ad about a a, a promo they are running and then you open it somebody's that mail came in as a junk mail and you're opening it. that's taking your time that's time a time waster you understand needless you understand tv shows that take your time and you are watching some series on tv while in the office on your phone some of us are even on facebook on our phones in the office on instagram on our phones in the office checking gossips check those things take your time they waste your time they are not impacting on your career personally. They are not impacting on your personal growth. They are not impacting on your productivity at work, on your performance, on the delivery of your job. They are not impacting on your KPI. Don't invest time in those things. They are not beneficial to you. So plan and organize yourself. To manage your time effectively, plan and organize your day and your week. Manage and control any form of interruptions that come to you. Do you understand? Plan each day as much, uh, you understand, detailed as possible. Do this ideally at the end of the preceding day or the first day at the beginning of your day. Plan your week on a big picture, you understand? Base, base, plan your week on a big picture basis, making notes in your daytime or your, your day timer or your desk calendar. Make daily to-do lists of your objectives in order to prioritize you understand your work use whatever system you prefer to record this you understand this list either it should be handwritten computerized use a, da a, a day timer or you could even use an organizer on your phone cross out items that are that you have completed and then know that i've attended to this so you can move to the next you understand move items that cannot be done that day to the next day you understand or the next week if they are not urgent, you understand, but they are important. Now, batch, you understand, routine tasks together, meaning you do this every day, they are routine now, you understand, batch them together, separate them from, you understand, high priority tasks, because there are some that are high priority tasks. What are the high priority tasks? I believe we've defined that they are urgent and they are important. They are high priority tasks. Do you understand? They are, they are ones that are time bound, they affect your KPIs. They affect your performance. 
You understand? They determine whether you'll be promoted or not. Those are high priority tasks. Break any large task or project into smaller pieces. Do you understand? And also um, work on priority or routine items during that time of the day, which matches your work habit. You understand? Your work habit preferences. For example, if you're actually uh, a morning person and you like to tackle tough assignments when you first start working, Batch your priority and harder tasks in the morning hours and do more routine tasks in the afternoon. What does that mean? It simply means that if you are someone who you are more productive in the morning, not in the afternoon or in the evening, then the high priority task is what you should do in the morning. Do you understand? And if you are somebody that you are more productive in the afternoon or stroke evening, you understand? As the case may be, maybe towards the afternoon, then batch your high priority tasks in that you understand afternoon whereby you'll be more effective more concentrated more there'll be more vigor and energy into what you are doing because you are an afternoon person there are people like that do you understand there are people who are a lot and are, are more productive during the early hours of the morning some are in the afternoon so that depends then handing each piece of paper or document um only once if it is possible do you understand if it is possible and then pref prefer or refer it on, file it, and also discard it if they are not, you understand, they are not relevant or they are not important as the case may be. Another idea is to also have a temporary hold until they are, you discard the file. Keep a file, perhaps, under your desk when you place documents you are not quite ready to discard at the time. You understand? Okay. You want to also try to delegate to others if appropriate and possible. Then set aside uninterrupted blocks of time for important and lengthy projects. Close your door, forward your calls to your um, phone mailbox, refrain from checking your emails. If you have a job that you need to do that has a deadline and that you are actually requiring time to concentrate to be able to attend to it. So, you close the door, you understand? Forward your calls to your phone mailbox so that you can be able to concentrate and you are not distracted. And then refrain from checking your phone or your mails all the time. If there are tasks you are meant to do that has a tight deadline and it requires your utmost attention and because that particular activity or task will impact, you understand, on the organization's, you understand, um, outcome in terms of the deliverables are required be, uh, uh, for, you know urgently then you need to really pay attention to face that work to get it done on time throughout the day review your objectives for that day and update your priorities give yourself also a break you understand give yourself a break several breaks during the day get up stretch because if you get if you sit down for too long it could also be tiring do you understand so you want to give yourself a break, get up, stretch, leave your desk for lunch, you understand? Don't sit down for too long as well. Because if you have that break, you refresh. Because you can, you can be in one spot for a very long time, you get weary, you get tired, you get exhausted, do you understand? So it's important you stand up, stretch, move around. That's why companies design breaks. Go for break, do you understand? Take the lunch break, do you understand? And get out, get away even, for a few minutes from your work, and it will help you to return a lot and refreshed. And also, uh, last but not the least, maintain your work. Create, ensure there's a life balance. Put your family and other social activities on your daily and weekly list. Avoid the habit of also ignoring uh, constantly, ignoring this constantly for work. Do you understand? So you want to ensure that if you are working, you understand you pay attention and concentrate at work and if you go home you understand some people also do the mistake of taking work home you understand and then if you are taking work home and you are also working at home you understand the time you're meant to spend with your family and all of those things will also impact so it means at the end of the day your wife is not happy or your husband is not happy it affects you psychologically it also uh, come back to work reflecting that so you must ensure that there's a proper 
work balance. What you understand, you need to attend to at work, attend to at work. What you need to attend to at home, attend to at home. Do you understand? Ensure that there's a balance. Be organized. An organization is actually an important component of time management, being organized. And when you're actually better organized, you are better prepared to do your tasks more quickly and diligently. Now, you do not also waste time in searching for and locating misplaced things or gathering resources at the last minute to do a particular task. So some of the steps for helping you to be properly organized, set goals, prioritize, and form good habits, you understand? Habits that enable you to be able to discipline yourself to do what is right. There are so, so many ways to actually manage interruptions, you understand? Interruptions, you understand? When we talk about managing interruptions, we are talking about managing workplace, managing documents, managing dropping visitors and even managing your phone. Let's start with managing workplace as we round up. Now, managing workplace, you want to decluster your desk by clearing it, you understand, at the end of each workday. You also want to file documents once they have been used and then you want to organize your, work, your workflow, you understand? Organize your workflow system in your space. When it comes to managing documents, you want to also define what you need to keep and also how long you need to keep it. You also want to arrange your file materials in a logical way, meaning you need to arrange them in an alphabetical order. What is, you understand, important, you are able to put them in a particular file and you label them so that in the course of searching and you want to spend time to be able to easily access them, you want to be able to say, oh, let me do it in such a way that when I need certain information, I need certain documents, I need to access certain things, I can be able to know where they are, you understand, at, you know, a very, within a very short time. So you want to be able to put all the things that are alphabetical, like A's, you understand? Maybe companies that have to do with um, IPEX, you understand? Um, uh, ITEL, you understand? Um, uh, I, uh, Airtel. And so anything that is A, you put it in that file. So when you know that, oh, I need to search for, and you know it starts with A, you can immediately go to that file. Instead of searching numerous files that are scattered all over the place, you can't tell where what document is, and so on. It helps you manage your documents. And then facilitate easy access to materials. Purge the files, you understand, on a regular basis. Meaning take out what is not necessary and what is not important and toss them or trash them if they are not relevant or they've been used and they have been discarded. Meaning they've expired, they are not relevant, they are not things that are no longer, they are not uh, relevant for the organization any, any longer. Look for a way to trash them. Then you also want to manage dropping visitors. Create a visual barrier, like I suggested earlier, at your workplace to be able to see who is coming so that you can be able to know, oh, this person, I, I don't want to see this person. You understand? Because you already seen who is waiting in the waiting room. And you can immediately know that, oh, I don't want to see this person because you've already seen the person from the transparent glass. Then, okay, don't have extra chairs in your workspace as people would not hang around for long if they have to stand. Because there are places whereby you put, some even put uh, cushions, meaning they, you're, you're making your office inviting. You're making it comfortable for interrupters to come and sit down comfortably and just, why? Because you have created a cozy environment for them to come and relax. Your office is not a relaxing point, it's a, it's a work spot, it's a workstation. Do you understand? So if you are, providing or creating a number of chairs for people to see, you are inviting people who will come and interrupt your work. Do you understand? Some offices, they will put television, they put TV, you understand? And they make it such that they are even showing African magic in, in an office. Those things are distracting. People, you, you are using those things to invite visitors who will come and distract you and disrupt your work. For important work, move to another space if, if possible so that you are not distracted or you are, your work is not interrupted. Also, like I said, learn to say no in a polite way. Then you also want to manage your phone. You know, batch your phone, uh, out calls, like I said. Batch your out calls. Delegate calls that you don't have to make personally to one of your team members to help you make those calls. You know, that's why managers have <clears throat> assistants. You understand? They have <clears throat> PAs in some instances. You know, so you terminate the calls once the business has been, end, has been done so that you don't 
keep being on the phone, talking to someone and just it. After you have had the business discussion, then you are not talking about other matters. That's productive time that you are actually wasting. So you want to be straight to the point and address what needs to be addressed over the phone and end the call. Set up a rotation of time members of your team and handling of incoming calls. Probably if you have an office whereby there's a central phone where anybody can attend to them or pick up those calls, then you can pay, create a timetable so that different people will pick the calls at different times and you don't have it for one particular person. And one of the things you also want to do to ensure that you avoid you know, such situations is that you try to make sure that if you are dealing with clients, they are able to rotate you. So you don't have one particular uh, uh, staff in an organization used to one particular client because there's a tendency that it might get personal. And if that staff leaves, that staff will likely leave with that particular client. So rotate it. So you also start, rotate the client with different staff members so that the person doesn't get personal. Do you understand? It knows that I'm a staff of Honeywell and I am representing this unit or department. What can I do for you? So that if it is having to do with the work, it, the person will, will talk about the work. Do you understand? Then there are different types of interruptions, of course. Um, there's over socializing on the job, like unnecessary meetings, setting unattainable goals. There's also telephone interruptions, which has to do with ineffective prioritization or junk mails. There's also poorly run meetings, poorly run meetings. You understand where time, you know, the time is wasted discussing things that have been initially discussed. And it's like you are repeating the same thing again and again in the same meeting. So that leads to poor planning, of course, misfired information or misfired information, then dropping visitors, clustered workplace, extended uh, lunch breaks, and procrastination which lead to waiting, to delays, to ineffect, ineffective delegation. These are all the types of interruptions that you might have within your workspace and do, within working hours that you want to try to avoid. Remember, we're talking of components of time management. Now, the last two components is scheduling. Scheduling is one of the last two components, which is the process by which you actually look at the time available to you and plan on how you will use it to achieve the goals you actually want that you have identified earlier. Then there's prioritizing. And this process of deciding which of these several options or tasks is most important is known as prioritizing. You understand? Placing an order of priority. So you've listed out the tasks to be involved in, but prioritize them. You, you don't have all the time and resources and energy to attempt everything, you understand, at the same time. So attend to the ones that are most crucial, most important, first before you, you understand, create an order, you understand, for them. Hence, you also want to determine your priorities of prioritizing, which involves deciding that activity A seems to be a bit more important than activity B. So that is what you should attend to first, particularly at the time you have the energy and, you understand, you understand vigor and strength to attend to it so that you can give it your best. And the ones that are not as important, when you're already weary and tired at the end of the day, you probably can be able to attend to those ones. So how do you prioritize your task? Very simple, you understand? These are the following questions you need to actually be, be able to consider to determine the priority of any particular activity. You understand? What am I doing that doesn't really need to be done? These are questions you need to ask yourself on the issues of prioritizing your task. What am I doing that could be done by someone else? What am I doing that could be done more efficiently? What am I, you understand? What are the costs versus the benefits of doing this particular activity? And how well does this particular activity fit into all my goals? Questions like, does this activity have a deadline for completion? How do, how must I do, how, I'm sorry, how much do I actually enjoy doing this particular activity? These are very lovely questions you need to ask yourself when it comes to, you know, uh, prioritization. Then you want to ask, have I promised or agreed to do this particular activity? Which of my needs will be satisfied by doing this particular activity? And how much time does this activity require for completion? These are questions you need to ask which will guide you on how to actually prioritize 
your task because you need to create an order in which you are attending to this task. Remember what is important and what is urgent. Do you understand? The importance of managing time effectively is it cannot be overemphasized. Do you understand? Because by labor, you can actually find food and water, but all of our labor will not help us find another hour. Why? Because <laughs> nothing can help you find an extra hour. You can spend, you understand, you can labor to find food, water, you understand, other things, but there's no labor that can help you find an extra hour. In other words, time is regarded to be finite. You understand? There's so much of it that we have such that once you have spent it, it's gone. It's finite. By effectively also managing our time, we can avoid a stressed and less productive workspace and avoid cramping work and family and other personal needs into finite hours. Just as we spend so much effort managing money, do you know we need to also spend equivalent effort managing time as well? If you spend that much uh, time or spend so much managing your money, then you should also be able to manage your time. So in, in closing, what are some of the ways we waste our time? Hmm? We waste our time due to factors beyond our control. Remember I said we should um, list out some of the things that are beyond our control within our working environment right now. Because these are some of the things that will help us know whether we are wasting our time or we are not wasting our time. So we waste our time sometimes due to the factors beyond our control. But also, we also waste our time due to factors within our control. So what are some of the factors be beyond our control that are resulting in our wasting of our time? And what are some of the factors within our control that is resulting in our wasting of our time? So if you have written this down, because I told us to tear a sheet of paper and write this down. The ones that are, we are involved in, that is, you understand, within our control, and the ones that we are involved in, that is beyond our control. If you've written that down, that's good. So let's cross-check what you've written. If some of the things here are actually aligning with it. For example, factors beyond our control. You understand? This, uh, of course, we're looking at ways in which we waste time. You understand? Like interruptions. These ones are beyond our control. You can't control phone calls coming in, questions from colleagues or co-workers or customers. You understand? Stopping you while you are, you are, you are at work, trying to ask certain things from you, get information, you can't control that. Computer or even other equipment break them, having problems, issues. You understand? The system crashing, the uh, computer, you understand, hanging, giving um, issues. You can't control that. Holding and also attending to un unnecessary and unproductive meetings. You can't control that because you are not the one organizing the meeting. You understand? You are invited as an attendee. You can't control that. Staffing shortages. Covering, of course, for absent co-workers. You can't control that. You understand? They are beyond our control. Unplanned work and even changed priorities. <laughs> you can't control that. Your line head gives you additional work. You can't control that. You understand? The, the, there's a change in the objective or the goal or the priorities of what we are meant to do from um, senior management. You can't control that. They are beyond your control. But what are the ones that are within our control? For example, the ones that are within our control, lack of good planning and organization, <laughs> they are within our control. Failing to set and also maintain priorities, losing factors on task at hand, jumping from project to project without completing any of them, this is within our control. Holding and attending unnecessary and unproductive meetings is within our control. If you are the one organizing it, spending too much time on phone calls, emails and the internet are yeah, within your control checking facebook checking instagram you understand um browsing on your phone on it they are within your control procrastinating until a project becomes urgent this is within your control inability to say no when appropriate you understand you understand talking on too much they are all within your control failure to delegate when possible delegation is within your control Socializing too much, it's within your control. You can decide to be quiet. You can decide to be, you know, to face your work. They are all within your control. So in summary, 
they are all there are actually ways in which we all waste time but some are beyond our control but many are within our control and these are the ones we need to actually work on the ones that are within our control so your take home from this session is that i want you to look at the things we've identified that are within your control which are all we see listed here there are things you need to start working on from today you understand manage your time effectively plan organize your day and your week using the required time management tools we've shown you manage and control interruptions and we've identified all the different types of interruptions eh? those interruptions that are playing special attention you understand that are taking your time manage them you understand and then, of course, manage and control these interruptions, paying special attention to meetings and emails, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is where we are going to draw the curtain for today. I know we've learned a lot today, and um, many of us have, you know, stayed true to the end. I must commend us for, you know, staying true to the very end. And this is a time where I will quickly attend to your questions in the next few minutes before we go. Thank you very much. Like I. I'd introduced myself earlier. My name is Ernest Obishaka. For some of us who are just joining, I'm the head of training at Oak Interlink Company. This program came to you courtesy of Oak Interlink. Of course, um, but for any of you looking at you know um, learning more and doing more about this, you can contact your HR who can actually uh, contact us so that we can be able to guide you on how to you know go about building your career in the different areas of importance. Okay, so questions.